Hey guys, what's up third grade? So excited to be back here with you. Uh, last week we learned all about classifying animals and it was a lot. So that's why we gave you guys two weeks to kind of digest it all and take it all in. So this week we're going to keep moving on with living things and talk about classifying plants. Now we did do a lot on plants with the plant stimuli as well as with photosynthesis. So um, knowing that background will help us be able to adapt and learn this a little bit better. So let's go ahead and get started. You ready to plant this garden? I am so ready. Good, cause so am I. Brought a few of my favorites. Sam, none of those have flowers. Of course not. They're gymnosperms. They don't need flowers. They make their seeds in cones. Well, my seeds are angiosperms. Their seeds are made in flowers, and that is a lot more lovely and delicious. Come on, gymnosperms are cool too. Their cones expose their seeds to the air so the wind can carry them to a place that they can grow. Angiosperm seeds are inside a flower or a fruit so that they're protected until they can germinate. Okay, show off. And what does germinate mean? <laughs> germinate, you know, grow. When seeds are planted, the first thing they do is grow roots to hold them in place. Next, they grow a shoot. And that's what we see in the garden when they start to grow. Look! But seeds will only germinate if they have enough water and if the temperature's right. Exactly. Now that it's spring, it's warm enough for us to plant these seeds in the garden. A little rain, a little sun, a little love, and voila! It's amazing that an entire plant fits inside this tiny little guy. And seeds even come packed with a little bit of food. A lot of gymnosperm seeds have little wings that help them fly away on the wind. Wings. Now that is pretty cool. Seeds have so many different ways of moving around and planting themselves. They can fly on the wind or get carried away by water. Yeah, even animals like birds or squirrels can carry them from place to place. See? Who needs gardeners? Seeds can do it all by themselves. Plants like angiosperms and gymnosperms make seeds so they can reproduce and grow into colorful new flowers and trees that add color to the earth. Yeah, my angiosperms produce seeds in colorful flowers. And my gymnosperms produce seeds in cones. Seeds need the right temperature and enough water to germinate, and our gardening helps make sure that happens. And once those seeds germinate, our garden will be blooming with new plants. Well, these blooms are doomed if we don't get to work. Let's start digging, Sammy. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we talked about plants uh, with seeds and then plants without seeds. So the two main types of plants. So here we go. Plant classification. Uh, classify flowering and non-flowering plants in a major group, such as those that produce seeds or those like ferns and mosses that produce spores, according to their physical characteristics. And that's what we just saw in our little video. Was it talking about the uh, plants that produce flowers and then plant plants that produce fruits or spores? So here we go. So let's review the parts of a flowering plant. This is what we did two weeks ago. So we have our leaves. They collect the sunlight and carbon dioxide and they release out oxygen. The flower actually helps the plant to reproduce. We have the stem that carries water and nutrients from the roots to the rest of the plant. And then we have the roots. They anchor the plant into the soil and takes in water and nutrients from the soil. So we just went over, just reviewed the main parts of a flower. So let's look here. What are some parts of the plant that we can eat? So if you're thinking of a plant, what's something that you can eat from a plant? Go ahead and think about this for a second. Good, so we could eat apples, we can eat grapes, we can eat all these different fruits and vegetables that grow off the plant, right? So, so just thinking about that, everything that we eat, almost everything that we eat grows from some type of plant. So seeds, 
Well, let me try and go back. So corn, those are actually seeds. Roots, what part of plants can we eat? We can eat the potatoes, which is the roots. We can eat the carrots, they grow underground. We can even eat leaves, such as kale, such as lettuce, spinach. Or we could actually eat the flower. Well, you're talking about the broccoli, the apple, the grapes, the carrot, the uh, what else? The mangoes, all the goodness. Let's go ahead and classify plants. Let's review the parts of a non-flowering plant. So a little bit different. We have the leaf or the needle. And these collect sunlight and carbon dioxide. And they have seeds or spores. Conifers used for reproduction, the seeds and the cones. Or spores used for reproduction on moss and fern. Um, stem or trunk, it's almost like the stem the root that carries the water and the nutrients from the roots to the rest of the plant. And then the roots actually anchor the plant in the soil and takes in water and nutrients. So you can see a little bit of a difference between parts of a flowering plant and parts of a non-flowering plant, plant and how they're different. Um, so really the only difference is the non-flowering plant has needles. It's going to have spores instead of seeds. Um, and then we can sometimes call it a trunk rather than a stem. All right, so let's look at exit ticket one. Emmeline is classifying the plants shown. Which of these, which of the above plants does not belong in a group of flowering plants? So remember, flowering plants are the ones that are going to produce flowers. So which one do not, which one does not belong? Is it plant A, B, C, or D? Good, yeah, A. A is a type of fern, so it has those, those uh, needle-like leaves rather than our flowers having regular leaves. Very good. So non-flowering. These are are um, over here guys these red parts on these leaves these are called spores so that's how that plant is going to reproduce rather than having a bee land and um, move the the pollen to the anther and all of that these spores actually reproduce the plants here um, let's look at the difference between them so a seed is the start of a new plant seeds can be different shapes sizes and colors seeds are produced in flowers or cones. So here's a lima bean plant with flowers. Here's a green lima bean pod with white seeds. So what are seeds, right? Now let's look at parts of a seed. Seeds are protect protected by a seed coat. Seeds contain tiny leaves and a root. Seeds contain stored food for the new plant. So all of this inside of here, inside of those Seeds is actually food for the seed. So they have everything that they need right there. So what are the parts of a seed? Uh, which part of the seed does each letter represent? Which part of the seed is not shown in the photograph? So we have our seed coat, which is along the outside, which protects it. Just like if we're cold in the winter, we wear our coat. We have stored food on the inside. We have the leaf over here, the tiny little leaf, and then we have the root. So if I was talking about A, what would A be? Yeah, it's talking about all that goodness in there, the stored food. Then B, good, yeah, what is B? Yeah, the little tiny leaf. And then what is C? What is this coming down here? Yes, it is the root. So what is not pho photographed? The actual seed coat. This looks like the seed has actually been out of its coat, so it might be germinating or growing. What are some plants that produce seeds? So corn, sunflowers, pine tree. Now look, that's a cone, right? So it still will produce seeds, but it's not a flowering plant because it's Pine cones are not flowers, right? So you might, don't get confused by that. Uh, it is a non-flowering plant, but it does produce seeds. So here we go. Fatima has several packets of seeds to plant. 
She has packets of bean seeds, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and tomato seeds. Which of these packets of seeds will produce a plant that will not produce seeds that are inside of a fruit or vegetable? So which of these packets of seeds will produce a plant that will not produce seeds that are inside a fruit or a vegetable? So is it A, beans, B, pumpkins, C, sunflowers, or D, tomatoes? Which one will not have seeds inside of it? Awesome. Yeah, A, sunflower seeds, right? Those will actually produce sunflowers. Now, they will not have a fruit or a vegetable, but they will produce a flower. Very good. So what are spores? Uh, we talked a little bit about this um, back in that picture with all the red dots, but let's dig a little bit deeper. What are spores? Ferns do not have seeds. Instead, they reproduce with spores. A spore is a tiny part of a fern that can grow into a new plant. Spores do not have a food supply for the young plant like seeds do. So they, they're not growing a bunch of food like a seed does. Um, they're growing on the bottom of a plant to help it reproduce. This fern has big leaves divided into many smaller parts. It has dots on them. The dots on the underside of the leaves are cases where spores grow. Spores cases, spore cases have spores inside of them. So they're right inside of there. All these little tiny red spots are going to be new plants. So here is moss. You've probably seen moss before growing near some water, growing on a rock. Um, if you walk up to it, you can rub your finger across it and the moss will come off. Um, moss grow where it's shady and dark and damp. Uh, they want to be near some water, but it almost looks like it's not grass, um, but it's, it's like a leafier grass. So the spores on the mosses for, form on tiny stalks that grow out of the green part of the plant. So moss also reproduces with spores. So here's our ferns and here are our mosses and they produce using, reproduce using spores. So how are they like seeds and how are they different? Uh, these are all examples of spores, all the tiny little dots. Now think of a seed inside of your head. Do they look like spores? No, right? And they're a lot bigger than the spores, actually. So Terrell and his brother were in the woods when they saw a green plant growing on a rock. He touched it and it felt cool, fuzzy, and soft. Terrell's brother said it was a type of plant that reproduces with spores instead of seeds. So which type of plant did Terrell most likely find? We just talked about this. If it's wet, if it's cool, if it's growing in a dark spot and it uses spores, what kind of plant did he find? Yes, D, you should automatically be thinking moss. Very good. Kareem learned that some plants reproduce with spores rather than seeds. Which of the following plants uses spores instead of seeds to reproduce? So uses spores instead of seeds. Ah, you caught it. it, is B, moss again, yes. So moss uses spores, the, all the other ones use seeds, the maple tree, the rose bush, and the sunflower. Awesome, guys, you have been wonderful. Um, when you are drawing your um, two different plants, a non-flowering versus a flowering, you can go just right over to Google and type in a flowering versus a non-flowering plant. And you have many different um, options to do so. Uh, you have the flowering versus non-flowering. You could do a side-by-side. -side. The PowerPoint, you can draw your ferns, you can draw your conifers, um, anything really that just tells me that you know the difference in a non-flowering plant. All right, uh, good luck with your assignment. I will see you soon, and um, ta-ta.